Welcome to the Trader Workstation Risk Navigator Reports. All right, at this point, you should understand what the Risk Navigator is, how to access it. At this point, we're now going to be getting into the reports. Now, let me just warn you, there are a lot of reports, and some of them aren't going to make any sense to you. I've been doing this a long time, and I've spent a lot of time on this Risk Navigator, and there's some stuff that just it still doesn't make any sense. I'm sure to someone out there, it makes some sense. But uh, to me, not, not all of it makes sense. Here we are. Let's jump into the risk navigator. Here. I always like to take this and make this chart a little bit more readable. If you just take your cursor, you can do that. And again, all this stuff is customizable, so I can shrink this down. I can move this up. But this session is not about that. My apologies. This session is about reports. Okay. So let me direct you to this right side panel here because this is where your, your reports are going to be. Over in the right hand column is where your reports are going to be. So here we have the first one, report. We have plot. You're not going to have account. <laughs> You're going to have underlying currency last trading day. Okay. So these are all the things that you can change in your chart. So if you want to open this up, you can see that there are about 10 different reports. So the first report is portfolio. This one to me is pretty worthless. It basically just jams everything together into one thing. So portfolio will just basically put it all together. It's not going to give you a whole lot of information. It just doesn't give a lot of information. My favorite report is risk by underline. If you do risk by position, it's going to break out every single option leg separately. So I like to group them together into risk by underline. As you can see here, risk by underlying, it gives you, it puts them all together. It puts them all together grouped. Now, if you wanted to see what positions you did have, so let's say we come up here and say, hey, you know what? I want to see all the positions I have with this. I can click to expand it. I'm just going to say, okay, well, this is your position. You got two puts here. All right, well, what is your position, you know, here? All right, this is a 20 25 spread. So group them all together, and then you can expand them. The other one I do like is I do like the report risk by industry. So if you're wondering, hey, am I too concentrated in any one industry? It comes here, and it basically says, is this how much delta you have per industry? So I'm going to go back to risk by underlying. You can, I mean, if you want to go through, play with them, risk by country, okay, I, that is probably definitely valuable to someone. And this is where we start to get some funky reports that, again, I don't really totally get some of these. Plot of data by underlying. It's just, there's a lot of stuff on there, how volatility is going to affect each position. Click through them. Look at them. If you understand them, use them. Great. If not, uh, the other one I do like to use is value at risk. So value at risk is basically going to give you a worst case scenario. And up here you have a couple measures here. Worst case scenario is saying, okay, this is what it is calculating is the worst case scenario for my Apple position. Is that the price goes up $8.61. That is worst case scenario for my position. So you can go down and see what it is per position, but it's basically saying that my worst case scenario is if the market goes up three standard deviations, which is 6.3 here, and my total loss is going to be 11,000. That is my projected loss at worst case scenario. This is a great little tool to go in and say, okay, where's my ultimate risk? And if you have a $25,000 account and your worst case scenario is $20,000, you've got a problem. That is way too much risk because worst case scenario is going to happen sometimes in your life. Period. I'm not, let me say, it's going to happen sometime every three years in your life as a trader. If you're always at max risk, you're always going to get blown out. Always. It's a guarantee. So this is just a good little place to go with that value risk. After that, you can change the plot. 
But as I said, I pretty much stick on risk by underline. Now this plot is I'm plotting the equity portfolio value change. So this is telling my system what I want to see in the chart. What do I want to see in the chart? And it's telling me I want to see my equity portfolio value change. I want to know what happens if we drop 6.3%, saying, okay, you should probably have a profit about 50K is where you're sitting at this point. We can change this. We can say, hey, you know what? I want some different data on my graph. So I can go say, okay, well, I want to go see at uh, that point, what is my delta? What's my equity delta position? It's going to show you, okay, this is how delta is going to change based on the movement. So right here, I'm at, you know, 30... This is where I am at delta now, and it says, you know, at certain points, I'm going to reach certain deltas. Obviously, you can see that there are things that are more and less useful. I just ch changed to equity unrealized PL. If I left it, what would the unrealized PL in my account look like? Um, again, I, I don't see a lot of value for these. I'm sure someone has, but I like to basically stick with uh, equity portfolio value change, or you could change to. You know, what's my total portfolio value? But I'd say leave it here. All right, next, here's where we get to the cool thing. So right now it's adding in all of your positions, all your positions together. But you can say, you know, I don't want to see all of my positions at once. I just want to look at my Apple position. So we've now isolated the Apple position. And this position is saying, okay, well, this is your risk graph on Apple. This is where you have, again, theoretical returns. Now, let's quickly talk about this date. All right. This date will default to the last day, basically to the last day um, of, the, of the position. So you can change that. You can say, you know what, I want to see what this Apple position looks like um, tomorrow. What's the risk graph on my Apple position tomorrow? You can see it'll add in this dotted line. You can say, uh, you know, what is it going to be by the 22nd? I'm just going to add in this dotted line. Now, this is shorter term option, which is why you're saying it just changed to short stock. <laughs> so, um, but you can go through and you can say, okay, well, what about, you know, other positions? What about, um, I'm just going to choose something here. All right, so here's a risk graph on this position. It's what it looks like now, but what about, you know, on the 22nd? What about on the 15th? How is it going to look to me? So you can go and you can see, okay, this is um, the risk graph on this position specifically. You can go in and change the dates. You can go in and do a lot of things here. So um, this last one, currencies, I don't really see any reason. Uh, if you have a separate account in IB and you're trading in something other than US dollars, okay, you could maybe see some value to that. But other than that, not too much. The last thing I want to go through are these little tabs up above. Now, pretty much you can get um, all the information you need just by, by running reports. Um, and there's a little bit of redundancy, you know, if you want to see your value at risk. You could click here as well, and it will give you your value at risk. Um, but the other one I do think has some meaning to it is this margin sensitivity. Well, that really kind of sums up the reports here. Go ahead, play around with it, click on these, see what you want to use, see what you don't want to use. Add what you like, throw away what you don't. But it is a really great tool. I love the fact that you can break this out into individual positions. Individual positions, how do they work? How do they change? If I was to sell this position, again, you could simply say, uh, take off this position. What would it take a look like? It's really great. All right. Thanks, everyone.